Welcome to the mm-hmm. Raw Food Health Empowerment Podcast. Today we are talking about um, joyful movement outside because we're celebrating Earth Day this year. And so, you know, in definitely Raw Food Health Empowerment Podcast fashion, I want to talk about you, Mom. How are you making time for joyful movement? <laughs> I'm anticipating the time for joyful movements. I am not going to lie. I'm with millions of people. Um, I'm anticipating because of the fear and everything of doing the things you want to do and cannot do the things you'd like to do. Mm-hmm. It's um, it's not that easy to say um, you're enjoying the time. We are just anticipating for better days, you know, for for less crimes, as you all know. Right. It was happening in New York. The last thing I heard was a a woman, some PhD woman, who was attacked with a hammer in the subway station. And I'm like, she says she'll never use the the transit system again. And I'm like, I don't blame you because... I don't know. If you hit me in my head with a hammer, I don't think I'll be able to talk again. So I don't know how to... The hammer Luckily, was in her head. Well, yeah, it was pretty bad, the attack. Um, mm. And when you think about the type of work that she does, I can't remember, you know, but I'm sure folks can just Google attack, subway attack. PA. I remember she had yeah. a PhD. She has some kind of job where it's like really heady, whatever. I know. And she was kind of a scientist or something like that. I, I heard about it. Yeah, I heard about it. Yeah. But so there's it's so like, much of them, Sam. It's right. so much. It's so it's crippling. It's very and this crippling. Is, because this is really something to to kind of think about because when I think about the outdoors and because we understand the health benefits of being outside, you know, mm-hmm. uh, the all of the bacteria that's circulating mm-hmm. f- in the soil, um, the plants, you know, the the bees doing their thing, pollinating everything, like all of that. Mm-hmm. We take in when we go out, go outside and spend time outside, and that actually makes our microbiome healthier, stronger, and strengthens our immune system. Being outside in nature, you know, nourishes our parasympathetic nervous system, so it actually induces the relaxation response, so we're able to deal with you know, everyday stressors and things like this. So it's like a huge benefit to be outside. And I know for for many black communities uh, that are, you know, from the urban environment, like myself, you know, I'm from Queens, New York, where when I was growing up, you had a huge concern with me going outside. So I, I didn't really get to do a lot of outdoor activities as a youth. Uh, because of that, you know, it wasn't mm-hmm. until high school where like there was a track opportunity and we would run basically outside on concrete because we didn't have like a track or anything, um, you know, but it was a contained, it was like you're with someone and someone is watching you, <laughs> you know, in a group. And and this is super important uh, for folks, especially young women. So, you know, it can be quite dangerous. So. How do we, how do, I mean, I don't know, what are your thoughts? Like, cause we, at that time, you know, back in the late eighties, early nineties, the 2000, you know, there was concern. And now we have another level of concern. You know, we're coming out of a pandemic. There's high, you know, rates of mental illness and folks seem to be a little bit more bolder in some of their, um, actions of of uh, abuse and attacks at least when it comes to the mta the transit system in new york but for for and like attacks outside you know to different racial groups and things how do we reconcile the fact that we need to be outside and move our bodies for our health and well-being and the fact that we live in community and not everybody's healthy okay now when you guys were growing up i was just one of those very paranoid mothers who think that if you go outside, somebody might adopt you, somebody will take you away, because those things were going on then. People kidnap people for whatever reason. I know they're doing it for body parts. That was my biggest concern. Wow. Even 
where we live, it's a community drive. And for you guys to go in the back and play, I have to make time to sit there to watch everything. So And who I was has just time for that as a mother. busy entrepreneur? <laughs> I, I was just that type. That means you didn't go outside until Sunday evening. <laughs> yeah, and I don't remember. Yeah, and that was... Sunday rare. or Sunday, <laughs> very rare. Yeah. So unless, unless, um, I mean, when you were younger and little, but Aunt, I think Aunt Vi used to take you, the lady who cared for you. She used to take you out sometimes when you were little. But in your teenage years and so, I mean, it was hard, Sam. It was very hard. You go out on school trip. Wherever your school go, if they go outside and play, that's what you did. So I guess the, the, the onus, the burden, I guess, for young people is the school system so that there is some kind of oversight and it's in a container where they can be safe. Now, for you as an adult, you're a senior, um, how are you feeling? Like, Because obviously you see the benefits, you understand the benefits. How are you making it work for you? Well, as I say, I don't let it bother me too much. I'm very concerned, and I'm very concerned about the people that it's affecting. But if I really want to go somewhere, I'll go. I will not take the subway. I will not take the bus. I would like to go to the botanical garden, but I'd have to go with someone. You understand what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I would go places, but I'll be very careful. But right now, I still don't allow myself to be in crowd. Not yet. Since, you know, COVID, I don't, I avoid crowd. But I'll go and walk the blocks in my neighborhood. Okay, so you are going outside. And yeah, yeah. I can't run. Well, you know, I can't do much walking. I tell you the issue in my foot. Mm -hmm. I cannot run, so I'm very careful. But I do go outside. And it's getting warmer now, so it's better. We have parks around here, but they use the parks for other stuff, so I don't go there. What do you mean, other stuff? Uh, drugs and stuff, Sam. Mm. People gather at the park to pass their drugs on. I don't go there because occasionally they have a little shootout there. And the little shootout, the little shot catch me, I'm finished, you know. So I'm, I'm very careful. I'm aware of the streets. Let's put it that way. I'm one of those persons because I watch the news and I know what to look for. I'm aware of the streets. So I avoid places that I think can be dangerous. I try to avoid it. Well, but I'm, there's I'm a very safe right now. I'm going to. Um, well, I would say I would say, yeah, you know, coming from New York, you know, you always have to keep awareness um, and some kind of guard up when you're outside. Right. Because you don't really we're, we're living in a time where we don't know our neighbors and stuff like that. <clears throat> And for folks who know me, they know that, you know, I, I personally, I don't have an issue with that because I, I, I kind of like to just feel like, you know, I am in my own space when I run out on these streets. But um, at the same time, my neighborhood uh, in Florida, I find quite safe. And when I was in L.A., you know, even though there were things that happened in the beginning when I went there. There were certain people and energies there um, and certain experiences that made me feel less safe going on certain blocks within my neighborhood. <laughs> like I wouldn't go into this, like specific blocks, like, you know, for different reasons. But I still found a space within my walking distance uh, from from my home where I could be active and be outside because being outside, being in the sun and spending time has always been super important. Like I just feel good, you know, and understanding mm. also, you know, from a health perspective, how important it is to get vitamin D, especially as melanated as myself, I need a lot more. I need at least 45 minutes a day. So, you know, so that's why it's a great, for me, like a great idea to couple it up with exercise because then I can handle yeah. the two in one go. Um, right. There's an article that was posted on prevention called How Much Time Should You Spend Outside? And this guy, he wrote a book. He calls it the, the or this author. I don't even know if it's a guy or not. But um, the it's called the 25-3 rule. So it's like 20 minutes a day. Uh, five hours every week and like something like this and like three days 
every, um, every, I mean, five hours every month, three days every year, like where you're like doing something outdoors, you're going hiking, you're doing, you know, kind of like basically having some kind of plan for folks on how to engage mm-hmm. with the outdoors, how frequent and what types of activities to do. I'm going to post a link to this article because I think it's really it's a really interesting thing to like get started if you like plans and prescriptions and things like like I do. <laughs> Even though I don't take yeah, pharmaceutical yeah, yeah. drugs, I do like these types of lifestyle prescriptions. And um you know, he talks about he I keep saying he, I don't know why I keep applying that. The author talks about, you know, mm-hmm. spending time outdoors can improve your memory, cognition and mood. All of the, the things that are really important to us, regardless of our age, you know, whatever we're doing in right, life right yes. now, these are all mm-hmm. pretty critical. And so, I mean, how are you on that metric? Do you find yourself spending at least 20 minutes outside every no. day? No, no, no. I'm, I'm locking off that with with most honesty. Um, it's getting nicer now, so and I'm about to do my herb garden again that I did before. So I'll be, yes, I'll be spending time out there. I'll be planting my little garden. I'll be doing things in the back. So yes, I'll spend more time out there. But how much time do you need to spend out there? Sometimes I overdo it, so I don't want yeah, to. Yeah, so know. they say for folks who are less melanated so like let's say you have you're on the lower end of the spectrum 20 minutes outside sunlight right um mm-hmm. and you know if you like just beyond sunlight like i said all the other benefits of just you know you mentioned gardening getting your hands in the soil breathing that in you know mm-hmm. as much of you're doing that there's all these additional benefits beyond the vitamin d from from the sun and all this. Uh, but like like if you're more towards my complexion or darker, or whatever, that 45 minutes a day. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? So you're good at like 20, 30 minutes. Oh, so I wonder why. <clears throat> but they say that um, uh, <laughs> I, you need you need vitamin D and the sun is vitamin D. So why would I need less? And when you get older, you need more D. I don't understand. Because, because of the, so the melanin is, is like a protective factor in a way. It's kind of like a shield. You know, when you go outside and you wear uh, sunglasses, uh-huh. right? It, it, it mm-hmm. blocks the sun. So with the melanin, there's just more for the sun to go through. So I need more time to get the same levels as like you because you have less melanin, right? So the sun is coming in faster, more quicker and more for you than for me at the same time. You understand? So that's why it's like different time. It's almost like I have built in sun protection, (laughs) you know? So it's like in order for it to... Yeah, of course. My you have skin all, my skin only get lighter in the winter, but in the summertime it gets darker. Darker. So I think I do. You know exactly. Yeah. So your skin gets darker, right? And you should you should monitor how long you spend outside and how your skin is responding. Maybe take pictures every day and see. But for me, it's like for you to get dark in the sun. Um, you're spending less time than I'm spending to get dark in the sun. You understand? Like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You understand? So it's you. just, you know, mm-hmm. because of that that melanin, it has to penetrate through. And just for me, it's just, or folks like myself, you know, it's just, it takes longer. Um, so that's why mm-hmm. we have to spend more time to get the same amount. And then for those who, you know, it's when, if it's winter time and you're not getting, there's, it's just, not pleasant to be outside and the sun is really not present, then folks are taking vitamin D supplements to get that instead. You know, and I, mm-hmm. I don't take pills just because I can't physically, it doesn't work out. <laughs> so so I right. prefer to do it the natural way. And luckily, you know, between living in LA, in California and Florida, it's been good. But even when I lived in Chicago, uh, running the store, you know, doing those runs, I was getting my my son in because I was outside, you know, running around. Right. Yeah. And oh, that's in the in the in the uh, summertime because it's so cold. Yeah, but even in the winter time, 
you know, like just having to like be outside. When you have that kind of job where you're like, you're from here to there, you're going to the produce supplier, taking stuff to the, to the, the restaurant, and then you have to, you know, mm-hmm. deliver stuff to the other location, you know, like you're outside a lot doing stuff, mm-hmm. then, mm-hmm. you know, you're in a better position to like, get those sun rays and get the vitamin D. Because even in Chicago in the winter, the sun is still there. It's just there for a less, a, you know, less period of time. Right. Um, yeah. And with most people working in offices, it's it's very difficult. So that's why I tell you that I'm anticipating and I'm, we're gonna have how much months of summer. So I'm looking forward to that because especially when you're locked up inside for such a long time, you know, you need to be out there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love especially that you retired, mentioned. Ret- uh-huh. Especially what? Go- retired people. It's time now to put them out. And so- it's time for us to go out now and sun ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Soak it in and enjoy it. Um, I like the fact that you mentioned gardening because um, there is a thing called nature-based therapy or outdoor-based therapy. Um, and, you know, like like we mentioned, there's, there's these mental health benefits as well as the mm-hmm. physical benefits to the outdoors. Uh, and with mm-hmm. the rise in mental illness right now, like having programming in your community around being outside i think is really critical one of the things i love like when i was in new york last in queens they had herb walks right which i thought was and pretty um, cool. remember and even in my community you can walk around you see people there are beautiful gardens and stuff beautiful flowers it's it's good it's it's nice the meditation too you could people don't realize you can walk and meditate and you're not bumping into anyone in my community, which you, you, you'd you see that before you walk around. We don't see anybody on the street. Remember we walk around, we go for our walks. Do we see yeah. much people? No. But that's the scary part when you don't see anybody. You don't know who can lash <laughs> out. Yeah, that's why you got to be aware. Or or yes. being in a in a contained space. So like when we went to the botanical gardens, I think that's like a great place to walk and meditate. You're inside. A I place. wish I was living closer to it. I'll be there every day. And there's there are some in Queens. Where do we we went to Brooklyn or something? Right? Yeah, Brooklyn. They have one. Queens Botanical Garden. It's yeah. 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 So there's stuff there's stuff in Queens and like I said, there's a newsletter. Uh, for folks that are in the Queens area, I think it's called Queens, QNS, I think it's called, where they they send out every week uh, different events that's that you can do in Queens. And they were really the inspiration for my Central Florida Health and Wellness Weekender that I do every week with, you know, health and wellness events in Central Florida, because I think it's such a great um a great idea, you know, get people together in the community of like mind to do something together. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And these like herbal walks, it's like you're outside, you're learning something new, and you're learning something that can help you with your health. Because I find mm-hmm. that, you know, a lot of us in our community were dependent on, um, the medical system because we don't really know how to take care of ourselves from a nutritional standpoint and then also from an herbal standpoint, which is what our ancestors Mm -hmm. used to do, right? We had that ancestral knowledge at one point, which has now kind of disappeared. So connecting with folks who are still tied in to share that knowledge, you know, um, because Mm -hmm. herbs can be very powerful can have the same effects as the pharma drugs without the the negative side effects you know because it's a whole plant Mm -hmm. you know working in synergy so Mm -hmm. i find like events like this to be great and for all of the entrepreneurial minded folks who are listening i i would you know take this seed and like plant that in your community you know whatever it is that you like to do take it outside Um, Take your coaching Mm -hmm. practice outside. If you're an herbal educator, take that outside. Invite people, 
you know, hook up on Eventbrite and whatever, hook up with your uh, local publications to let them know that you're offering mm-hmm. this. Because I feel like this, this is such a great, exciting thing. Yeah, and they also have community gardens where people can go and give a helping hand and, you know, get your hands dirty in the soil for yeah. a great purpose because it beautifies the community. Yes, mm-hmm. and connecting that with your church community, right? <laughs> I always like to bring in the church because the church is like, oh, you, when you talk about we family. We are the church. We are the people. That's mm-hmm. where the church come in, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and just like, you know, making even a stronger bond with your church family to say, hey, let's do this together as a church family. You can even, uh, my friend Brianna, who has been on the podcast many times, she has a course, an online course, uh, going through the essential oils of the Bible, where it talks about Mm -hmm. all the different oils that are mentioned in the Bible and where they're mentioned and things like this. Now, taking that outside where you can identify the plants and refer that, you, there's always an intersection that you can make, you know. Mm, mm, um, true. So there's just so much, you know, opportunities for all the health coaches out there, different ways in which you could lean in and create some fun, new types of educational program. I know a lot of us are doing right. a lot of online things, but I think at this point, folks are ready to get outside um, and be in community at this point right yeah mm-hmm. yeah true true and it's coming up to spring i mean it's spring now some places new york we're looking forward for the warm weather not not just for me because i'm not selfish i enjoy the coolness but there's people who still think it's very cold and i think it's nice out. but it's not nice enough to plant anything as yet it's only nice enough to start the preparation mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Then in in some places like um, Ocala, (laughs) which is uh, in Florida, they have wilderness adventure therapy. Um, And I could provide a link for folks who are interested in that where um, Mm -hmm. they use opportunities, like I said, to to do outdoor stuff. It's a little bit different because it's more um, uh, like wilderness is more of like you're like really out in the woods. And you're mm-hmm. doing things like horseback riding, mountain climbing, you know, not hiking is more like, let's say hiking is beginner intermediate. Mountain climbing, you're that's advanced, <laughs> you know? Right. Um, yeah. So you're like real, like, you know, canoeing and like very active type type stuff. There mm-hmm. is a, a group uh, called... Uh, Man, I'm I'm going to find the link and put it here. Like outdoorsy black women or something like that, where they're doing that oh, okay. type of stuff. They're trying to showcase that um, cuz there's 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 this I guess stereotype that black women don't do outdoors and mm-hmm. it probably comes from the fact that most of us tend to be congregated in urban areas where like we just talked about it's quite dangerous. And so Mm -hmm. we don't really have exposure to do things like swimming and uh, sport for the, you know, outdoor sports like soccer and things Mm -hmm. like this, canoeing Mm -hmm. and stuff like this. Because if you're landlocked in an urban environment um, and there's fear of the, you know, all this stuff and some of these things, as a young person, you need money to buy the equipment or to pay dues and fees to participate. So, you know, exactly. A good amount of us from these environments probably weren't raised, you know, outdoorsy, whatever. Yeah, um, outdoorsy. Yeah, <laughs> for all these <laughs> for all these reasons. But the yeah. this this group, this organization, is showing that there are Black women out there doing these types of things and encouraging others to do this because there is healing in the outdoors and being active um, mm-hmm. outside. Wait, well, you know, I grew up in the outdoor. Yeah, we only go, I know. Yeah, I when we went to Jamaica, you just took your shoes off and you was running through the fields. <laughs> and I'm it like, feels so good. <laughs> I love the grass under my feet. And see, people don't understand that the kind of energy they get from walking barefoot and grass and the naked ground, not the concrete, you know? Yeah. Earthing. Those were the best life, but... Yeah. 
we have uh, we, we enjoy both life you know when saying all that yeah yeah and i yes. would love to explore how you how to not lose that you know and i find that you you stay connected by bringing the outdoors in during the winter time because oh, you have all yes, these plants yes. plants and i have to attend to them like a child i actually have to use cotton to clean the leaves of my plant because just the same way you take a shower the plants need showing and i can't lift them up and put them and wash them off in the shower so i have to get a basin with water and uh a soft cloth and clean the leaves of my plant because I breathe them in so they have to be clean mm -hmm. so it's it's a job it's not easy <laughs> that's funny I guess in the outdoors um they would they would get their natural shower when it rains when it rains yeah but in the winter time you have to clean them you understand because they pick up soot dust and you see in the winter time you have the heat going you get soot from that heat you know just like mm -hmm. when you get dust in your house the plant gather the dust also so you don't want to breathe in dust so you have to clean your plants also so i spray them with water i have a spray bottle and then i clean them off with um soft cloth and that's so you bathe them yeah. until the summertime when they can go outside and you know enjoy nature they reconnect yeah. i know i mentioned one of the wilderness therapy um activities that they have out there you know that's available uh is working with horses right they found that working mm -hmm. with horses is very good um especially you know as a therapy practice dealing with past traumas and things like this um bite-sized vegan did you get a chance to read and watch these the videos bite-sized vegan because they were talking about horseback riding and if that's even ethical especially from a vegan perspective no i didn't get to read it but i i i i don't know i did uh, the riding of these animals and stuff i don't i just quint sometimes because sometimes you have you know, i'm not fat shaming now but you have some overweight people <laughs> that sit and do and the horses cannot move yeah. i'm not fat shaming i'm just it's reality and we mm -hmm. have to think about the horses like how we think about ourselves. Like, would you want to pick up something? You're a 120 pound person. Would you want to pick up something 300 pounds to carry? No, you wouldn't be able to manage it. Yeah. Especially think, a woman. I think, that... I think beyond fat shaming, and I would love to know, like in Jamaica, did y'all even have horses? No, I used to ride donkey in Jamaica. But I ride it for fun. And I know that the donkey didn't like it because he stepped on me one day. Mm, that must hurt. And they're, very, <laughs> they're not very pleasant looking faces, though. So, you know, they're <laughs> angry. See, what they do, they put something over the, the, they blindfold them. This way they don't see anybody getting up on them. And I think that's so cruel, though. Yeah. You know, this is why you don't call anyone a horse because they say horse was meant to pull weight. I don't, I personally don't like it. I don't like to get on the back of animals. I don't. You see, Ma, because intuitively you are vegan. You have the sensibilities because that's, that's basically what these folks are saying is that, um, like what makes us think that horses are here and put on earth to carry weight? And you know they get upset. Do you do you know the horses get upset? Do you see when they take yeah. off with you? They're angry and they'll throw you. Mm -hmm. I never like it. Never, never, never like it. Yeah. There I think this that's is, abuse though. Right. And um and that's what Bite Size Vegan, she had some really great, interesting conversations with folks that like horse caretaking and horseback riding has been a part of their tradition and culture in their family that's the work that they do and folks have learned that or come to an understanding that obviously the horse doesn't want this and you can't say you love your horse um and abuse it at the same time right it, it comes from that same kind of weird mentality cognitive dissonance of like you know there's so many examples, one of which is like 
enslavers who are like, oh, I'm not a bad yeah. person. I just, this is just my property, whatever. Because there were folks like that who owned slaves, who were Christians mm-hmm. even. <laughs> you know, they mm-hmm. show, they went to church every Sunday and somehow right. found a way to justify owning beings, you know, um, but because they look different, had a different culture, talked a different language or whatever, somehow they they were not they couldn't identify with them and it was easier mm-hmm. for them to subjugate them to this lower class of like I can own of you know, I can own your property, you know? And like with horses, we've just created a narrative. We don't even, you know, like to say that, cause you, you said it earlier, they were meant to, to carry weight, but where did that come from? You know, <laughs> you know? You know Sam, Sam, I grew up, I grew up seeing a lot and abuse, but it's when I get older, I realize how bad it was. But in the third world countries and in my country, I don't even consider Jamaica a third world, to be honest with you. We call it now developing, developing countries. In my developed Jamaica country, (laughs) many years ago, when I was a a very young child, um, I see where my family, we had um, a a mill for for a cane mill that they juice the the sugar cane, and his horses pulled those cane, pulled those um, mill. Mm-hmm. They put them. They tie the mill, the horses onto the mill, and they have to pull it. And the abuse that I see that made me cry when I was a little girl. They beat the horses if they're not pulling hard enough. That made me cry. And I was a very little girl, but I never liked to see people abuse animals. I never liked to see it. I never, never liked to see it. It's like you take a pig to live inside your house. To me, that's an abuse because a pig need to be outside. Honestly, the pig don't need to be in the bed. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> and some people, I've seen them do that. It's kind of... The pig need to be outside because that's their nature. Outside yeah. is a part of them, not inside the bed. It's for human beings. So I've seen a lot of abuse with animals and I've seen it today. I've seen it today even here. So it's not something that I, I agree with. I don't like it. As I say, I was a child and I saw that. I saw it in my family where they spanked the horse to pull the, the, the mill because he's not going fast enough and they whip him. Mm-hmm. The horse could be hungry. The horse could be thirsty. You know, the horse could be in pain because remember, they have joints like human being. They have flesh. They have feelings. The only thing is that they can't talk. And that bothers me. Yeah. So so you talk about trauma. I suffer trauma from that. Because I still remember it and I still cringe when I, when I remember what happened. Now as a little girl, I jump on the back of a horse already and the horse step on my foot. So I, I learned my lesson. The horse was angry. The horse don't want nobody to ride there. No. Yeah. And you know... And I'll, and I'll share these links so folks could dig deeper on this because at mm-hmm. the same time, <clears throat> animal therapy, I think, is great, especially working with horses. And the way some people do it is in a very caring manner where you you connect with the horse as a, a living, sovereign, sovereign being without jumping on them. Because, like, you wouldn't just jump on somebody's back without their permission. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And there are times when you you have a certain comfort level and connection with a horse that you build over Mm -hmm. time where the horse is okay with you being on it or whatever, doing certain things with it because you have created some kind of relationship, you know, and there's ways in which the horse can communicate that to you. Um, And so I'll share these links for folks who are interested because I, I do find it quite interesting. It's like when you go on this path of eating cleaner and you kind of start to see some of these um, issues that are going on in our food system and then how we treat animals. You know, it's like a whole spiritual journey of understanding Mm -hmm. like some of the things that we've been taught to accept um, are are quite strange, you know? Because, yes, one of the things, Sam, I'm not to cut you, sorry. One of the things is you'll have some people jump up what I say about horses and says, yes, but Jesus rode on a, a donkey and he was like a perfect example. 
Okay, so we have learned from Jesus' day until now, our knowledge has been broadened. He's the one who gives us the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding. To mm -hmm. know that if our heart says something is wrong, don't do it. You know, and I know people will criticize me for talking like this, but let your heart talk to you. Let your heart speak for you. Because if something is, if your heart is saying something is not right, it's not right. And that's yeah. just how I feel about it. After you watch these videos too, one of them highlighted the, even the thing they put on the horse's mouth for, <sighs> it goes up into their palate, right? And when you Ooh. pull on that, it's it's because they have nerves, like you said, like they, you know, and so they're feeling pain in their mouth, and it's just it's a lot of abuse and brutality. And once you know, you know what it's I like, don't like about it? They're dumb animals. They can't talk, and if you put that in there, they can't even groan because you you move away the groaning. They can't groan. They have pain. They get pain. Yeah, I, I think some folks who work with horses wouldn't call them dumb animals. Um, but when I said they're dumb, when I said dumb, they can't speak. We could say we are in pain. They can't say anything. That's what I mean when I say dumb. And I find it, I find it akin to like folks with um, disabilities who have to maneuver different than we do, right? We have folks in our community who are people who aren't able to speak. Um, <clears throat> but they but, have sign language and we don't know sign it. Sign language. Folks have sign language and we don't know it. Uh, cause you see even the way we, we treat immigrants, right? When they are struggling to, to speak the language and we kind of assume that they're not as intelligent where they could have been doctors and whatever in their country. Exactly. You know? Just because they speak a different language from us. Yeah, and I mean, just with yeah. any of us, like I know with me learning other languages, it's very humbling. Like you're not able to have these deep conversations, you know, unless you're super, mm. super fluent, you know. Right. Um, yeah. So when you when you think about it in that manner, it's like, well, how are these animals any different? You know what I'm saying? They obviously they speak. For example, the birds. They are chatting all the time. I know where I live, there's a lot of animals in Florida, okay? There's birds, lots of different birds. I mean, I, I feel like Florida has the best variety of birds I have ever seen. Like my favorites, cardinals, red cardinals, there's there's bluebirds, there's all sorts. They come in all shapes and sizes and they're just so wonderful to watch. And you have squirrels, right? We never really hear squirrels, but I know they make some kind of sound. But you can tell by observing them, they are communicating with each other. Like the other squirrels exactly. understand. Exactly. You know? That's what I'm talking about. This same way with a horse. A ho another horse will understand when a horse is going through pain. This is what I'm talking about. It's only their peers can understand what they're going through. But we as human beings, we don't know. But we should try and use ourselves to know that if these Animals are flesh and blood and bones. They must feel things when you do things to them. And nerves. Because when you do it to <laughs> us as human beings, we feel it. They have yeah. nerves, you know, but they can't talk. I hope this, even though we we've, we kind of went down this journey, which I think is important, you know, from a, a perspective as you're going through your healing journey, it's also a spiritual journey. And, um, you know, there's just some things to, to think about as you're, as you're engaging in nature um, for your own health and well-being, just being observant and understanding of the world around us. Mm -hmm. And um, enjoy Earth Day. And I hope that you all find a way to get outside and nurture your bodies um, in the healthiest way possible.